Hi, and welcome to Define Phase of Lean Six Sigma Green Belt. And we know that this entire training is driven using Minitab, which is a statistical tool which is used exhaustively in most of the research organizations, in most of the institutes, in most of the universities, and in most of the Fortune 100 and also Fortune 500 companies. All right. What is this image all about? There's a monkey sitting here and it's trying to type something on the typewriter. Huh. This is called as infinite monkey theorem. This states that a monkey hitting keys at random on a typewriter keyboard for an infinite amount of time will almost surely type a given text. And most interestingly, it can type the complete work of William Shakespeare. Do you want to be one of these monkeys who keep randomly trying without knowing what to do? Do you want to be one of those who wants to execute or perform a Six Sigma project without not or without knowing what exactly you are expected to solve? without knowing what the problem is do you want to solve do you want to even proceed yeah we never want to get into that situation right we never want to be a monkey which is going to execute a million projects without knowing what the problem is and ultimately trying to figure out or trying to solve that problem we do not want to be one of those we do not want something which is immaterial so why did I put this example even before we get started let me tell you this any Six Sigma consultant is going to spend significant amount of time on define phase majority of your portion goes in defining what your problem is you need to know what the business problem is only then you can get started with the project and this is extremely imperative and extremely difficult step, by the way. All right, let us move on and see what the objective is. So here are the course objectives. We'll be looking into the four steps of define phase. We'll be looking into what triggers project ideas. How do you identify which project you'll have to target? You'll come to know how to identify and define critical to qualities, right? Through your voice of customer, voice of business, and cost of poor quality. And we'll be looking into a few of the examples. We'll move on to do an exercise to identify the critical to qualities based on these. We will then choose a relevant project, both from business perspective and the customer perspective. And then we are going to prepare the project charter, which is the first document which gets prepared in any project that you start. We'll try and understand what are the key elements of project charter. And then we'll come up with a high level process map, either using SIPOC, supplier input process output and customer, or we'll look into FDM, functional deployment map, and also we'll look into a basic flowchart. Finally, we'll end with the outputs of the phase and then we'll look into the kill gate. Kill gate is nothing but what do we do at the end of the phase? What do we need to review to ensure that the defined phase is complete? We'll quickly look into the summary, a recap, and then we'll close this particular defined phase. And we'll move on to the major phase after that. So what are we waiting for? Let us get started. There are four steps in the defined phase. The first step is triggering the multiple project ideas to identify the most relevant ideas. And then we are going to prepare the project charter followed by preparing the process map. And this process map would be at a high level. All right. But what are the typical triggers for me to generate project ideas? How do I do that? What could the possible triggers be? Let us look into this. The first thing is you look into voice of customer, VOC analysis, 
right? This voice of customer explains the problems customer is facing. Sometimes customer might be very vocal in telling you that this is my problem that I'm facing with the business. Sometimes customer doesn't know. They'll be ambiguous. Sometimes they'll not open up. But onus is on you to identify what the problem is from a customer perspective. Think about Domino's Pizza. Sitting at home, if you order Domino's Pizza, pizza would be delivered to you within 30 minutes. If not, you can have pizza for free if it exceeds 30 minutes. Now, why do you think Domino's Pizza has set 30 minutes as its goal? Did you say Domino's Pizza that you want it within 30 minutes? Or did I say? Who said? No one has told them. They themselves analyzed and understood that if they deliver the pizza within 30 minutes, pizza would be still hot and you would enjoy the yummy taste of that. So you'll also have to get into the shoes of the customer, understand what the customer's problems are, even if the customer is not opening up. Yeah, that's the first thing that you need to look into. You also need to look into what is the voice of business. Voice of business explains the problems the business is facing. The very reason any company does business is to be profitable in the market. It's there to generate revenue so that its business might sustain, right? So you need to understand what the voice of business is. And then you need to look into the process. You need to look into what is cost of poor quality. What is triggering process defects? Why are they high number of defects? Why is there poor quality, right? You need to identify all these reasons. And once you put together all these reasons, then you identify the corresponding CTQs. We'll be doing an exercise on that. You identify all the corresponding CTQs, critical to quality. And from there, you will note down the potential problems of the customer or the organization based on voice of business, right? You might also want to look into the cost of poor quality. And then you actually try to come up with what is CTQ, etc. But let us do a deep dive into what is voice of customer, voice of business. Voice of customer is obtained from the downstream customer, the direct recipient of the process or service. If Apple iPhone or if Apple is manufacturing iPhones, who is the end customer? You and me, who is purchasing iPhone and starting to access that, right? So if we say that the screen size of Apple isn't good, then that's a problem that we are raising, right? And Apple is going to take it seriously. They are going to do a project on that and fix that issue in the future releases. So it's directly going to come from the end customer. Yep. This information can be internal, a process partner to the company, or it can also be external. You might be serving your customers within your organizations also. If you're from a quality department, your clients would be the different project managers, the different delivery managers. Right? But they in turn might be doing projects for different clients, external clients. All right, let us look into this. Voice of customer is the expression of customer needs and what is it that the customer desires? And when voice of customer is obtained from an internal process partner, it's it tends to be very specific. But mind you, you might want to validate that with the information from the ultimate external customer. We need to do that. All right. And when I say 
the voice of customer would be specific when it comes to internal process partners or internal customers is this they clearly say that I need delivery on Tuesday as opposed to your external customers who would say I need faster delivery right all right when obtained from an ultimate external customer the needs must often be translated into something meaningful for the process it may be ambiguous your external customer might say deliver with high quality as opposed to your internal process partner who would say deliver me with not more than two defects per product or with not more than one defect per product or with zero defects and that is what Six Sigma is all about we try to achieve almost zero defects but definition says it is 3.4 defects per million opportunities and then we look into voice of business which is often best obtained from the process owner yeah you go to a person who is a process owner who is managing the process who owns the process who makes changes to the process and ensures that process is implemented right and if you collect this voice of business it tends to be very specific for example lead time of two hours labor efficiency of 85 percent of standards so on and so forth and these are usually in reference to the health of the organizations right it's normally going to speak about the health of the organization how the organization is performing is it doing a good job or not and you might also want to look into process cost efficiency the repair costs which are also primarily derived from the voice of business once you have voice of customer and voice of business in place you need to move on to look into what is critical to quality for you CTQ is a product or a service characteristic that's going to satisfy customer requirement or a process requirement we do a deep dive we'll do an exercise we'll try to identify what the CDQ is all about these measures which relate to the important parameters of product or services have these typical outputs quality cost and delivery right when you're dealing with quality you term that measure as CTQ critical to quality when it comes to cost it is CTC critical to cost when you're dealing with delivery you say it's critical to delivery all the three above are most often than not refer in most companies as CTQ because cost and delivery are ultimately going to result or are considered to be part of quality if you want higher quality spend higher cost if you want high quality ensure that your delivery process is in place which is robust in nature but few companies also consider the three as separate entities altogether that's absolutely fine all right yep here are a few of the categories of metrics if you want to come up with your CTQ for cost for example which is most often than not derived from the business you can look into these process cost efficiency repair costs purchase price depreciation residual value so on and so forth if you're looking into quality aspect which is often derived from the customer voice of customer you might want to look into these product services or features attributes dimensions what is reliability availability taste yeah this is also measured basically right when you go to McDonald I've given this example in the past when you go and order McDonald burger it's going to taste in a specific way if you go to a different McDonald 
store and order a burger, it would taste alike. They measure the taste as well. And what is your success mantra? They say that they do not bake, they do not cook, they manufacture. That is how strong their processes, that is how strong their measurement is, and that is how strong the metrics that they have chosen are. If you want to choose something related to speed, which is usually derived from both voice of customer and voice of business, you can look into these lead times, delivery times, turnaround time, cycle time, delay, so on and so forth. These things would become clearer when we do the exercise. So don't get bogged down and don't press the panic button yet. If you want to look into service and safety related metrics, here are a few of the examples. Corporate social responsibility, CSR, right? Most tier one, tier two companies do this. You can look into these options as your metrics or CTQs. All right, output measures. Output measures are usually referred as Y data. We have already discussed about this equation, Y is equal to F of X. What does this say? Output is equal to function of inputs, right? That is what it says. So output metrics quantify the overall process, which includes how well the customer needs and requirements were met. Typically, it's related to quality and speed requirements. And also, and also it includes how well business needs and requirements were met Typically, it's speaking about cost and speed requirements. So business and customer, right? You're considering both. Now, look at these images. Wow, I love to eat chocolates. And look at this, an innovative way of using canned citrus juice. And this is some weird looking thing. What is this? Let me explain in a while. Since we are discussing about the measures, let us discuss about some interesting measures. Right? What are a few of the interesting measures? If you purchase pepper, for example, and if you want, if I were to ask you a question on, do you measure excreta in the pepper that you purchase? Do you even expect excreta, mammal excreta, to be part of pepper? Oh my God, if that is the case, what are the quality folks doing? Let me tell you this. According to US FDA, Food and Drug Administration, one mg of excreta per pound of pepper is acceptable. You cannot go and sue the paper company. And I'm sure you have been to movie theaters, right? And whenever you go to watch a movie, what do you do in the breaks? You go and quickly grab popcorn. Yeah, very interesting thing, right? That is what we do most often than not. Excreta is measured even in popcorn, mammal excreta. One excreta pellet in popcorn is acceptable according to US FDA and for the chocolate lovers let me tell you this one rodent hair when I say rodent squirrel mice rat right one rodent hair per 100 grams of chocolate is acceptable it's permitted by the way you cannot go and sue the chocolate company saying that, see, I found a rotten hair in this chocolate. You can't do that. And canned orange juice. Most people feel that the canned orange juice are high in quality. Yes, they are high in quality. quality right? And have you ever consumed pulpy orange juice? Pulpy, there will be a lot of pulps. It tastes so natural. Right? Five Drosophila X, which are, by the way, posted here, Drosophila X, right? Five Drosophila X for 250 ml 
of can citrus juice is permitted oh my god what crap yes it is permitted right. and also there are many interesting measures right there is something called as micro century which is nothing but equivalent to 52 minutes there is something called as fucking oh i didn't abuse anyone i really mean it if you do not believe me let me write it down for you and that is how they pronounce by the way it's not my mistake f i r k i n i'm not sure how you are going to pronounce this i didn't abuse anyone by the way right this is a dimension of mass and this is equivalent to 90 pounds 40.833 kg to be precise and there is something called as nano acre it's not related to real estate nano acre is by the way unit of real estate but on a vlsi chip not on the ground on a vlsi chip it is equal to 0 0.006 square inches there's something called as donkey power which is equivalent to 250 watts as opposed to horsepower which is 745 watts right so you measure all these things you know so you need to be very clear on what would be your measure measure basically right ctq from there you will have to come up with your measure what do you want to measure all right let us do this quick exercise to identify what the ctqs could be what the possible ctqs could be based on voice of customer and business this is also going to clear a few of your doubts if they are not clear until now let us look at the first one your customer or your business says deliver me the product faster what could the possible ctq be what could the possible ctq be think aloud we have looked into umpteen number of examples until now it's delivery time right so if your customer or business says deliver me the product faster you'll say that i'm going to measure from here on delivery time and i'll try to reduce the delivery time a multiplex owner comes to you and says that i've newly built a multiplex but it is empty please help me what could the possible ctq be occupancy percentage and you'll say that let me improve this metric responses to the queries should be faster what could the possible corresponding ctq be speed response time yep and you always want to reduce the response time so there might be few metrics which you want to possibly reduce the value of that by implementing six sigma project there might be few other metrics which you might end up improving as a result of implementing six sigma project not a lot of people are visiting the mall what would you do which metric would you look into i would probably look into footfalls number of footfalls yep that's a metric that i'll try to improve upon loan documents or loan document was incorrectly filled what is happening here which metric the ctq would you target i'd probably target error percentage or accuracy percentage right i'll look into error percentage i'll try to reduce this deliver me the pizza hot yep so which metric would i possibly look into temperature i'll ensure that the temperature is within a particular range it should not be extremely hot just because customer is saying that he wants pizza to be delivered hot it should be of a particular temperature if it's extremely hot and if he burns his tongue then he's going to abuse you if not directly indirectly in his mind he'll do that right so don't do that and especially if you are superstitious don't do that 
All right. We incur a lot of warranty cost in fixing products. What, are, what would you possibly look into? Warranty cost. I'll probably look into cost of poor quality. I'll look into cost of failure. Cost of quality failure. That might be the metric for me. I'll try to reduce upon that. Operator took a lot of time to address my query. Wait time. I'll try to reduce this wait time. We could not process loan documents within the time promised to the customer. Resolution time or processing time. I'll try to reduce upon this as well. Loan application forms submitted by loan officers have too many errors. Probably try and reduce the defects. Yep. I'm pretty sure now you're quite comfortable on how to translate your voice of customer or voice of business into CTQ, which is nothing but a metric. But remember one more thing here. You need to look into two CTQs. One is called as primary CTQ and the another one is secondary CTQ. What is primary CTQ and what is the secondary CTQ? All right, let us take some example here. Okay, deliver me the product faster. It has delivery time. That is my primary CTQ. In the due course of reducing my delivery time, it should not so happen that I've hired 10 additional resources. If I hire 10 additional resources, I'm bringing about improvement by consuming a lot of cost. I'm increasing the cost. And this is not the objective of Six Sigma. We need to try to maintain this cost constant and by maintaining this cost constant, we have to try to reduce the delivery time. Or, or you might also want to decrease the cost alongside decreasing the delivery time. And now this cost is called a secondary CTQ. The side effect of making improvements to the primary CTQ is your secondary CTQ. Think about this. There is something called as minoxidil. Minoxidil. Yep. People who are bald must be knowing this. Right? Minoxidil is used in almost all the hair growth medicines. It will help reduce the hair fall and it help, helps increase your hair growth. But primarily, minoxidil was invented to reduce the high blood pressure. It was supposed to manage the blood pressure of the human beings. And when people started taking this, they have seen a side effect, blessing in disguise. And that was excess hair growth. Yeah. So, always that doesn't happen, right? Always you'll not be blessed. Sometimes it might have a negative impact adverse impact okay by the way viagra which is used to cure sexual related problems was also meant to address high blood pressure but it found its roots in some other area by the way but see these are the side effects you need to counter those you need to look into those the side effect can be positive or negative the examples that I've given are positive, but you might also end up having a negative impact. You need to look into that. All right. Now, onus is on us to move on to step two and choose the relevant project. But even before selecting, you need to look into three or four key things. And the first thing is, what is the result that we want to achieve? Right? Does a project have significant impact on the customer satisfaction? If it's of minuscule in nature, if it's not going to increase your happiness, do not do that. Think about this. 
If you order Domino's Pizza, they're going to deliver you pizza within 30 minutes. Otherwise, it's free of cost for you. If tomorrow Domino's comes and says that, from 30 minutes, we have reduced the duration to 29 minutes. Would it impress you? And do I need to do a Six Sigma project to reduce the duration from 30 minutes to 29 minutes? Does it really make sense? Absolutely no. So don't do such projects. Look into high impact projects. It needs to have a significant impact on customer satisfaction. Maybe if I reduce the duration of pizza delivery from 30 minutes to 15 minutes, maybe it's going to have a significant impact on my satisfaction levels. But it comes for a cost. Yep. All right, this is a this is an extremely important statement. Customer first. They are your lifeblood. They are giving you the business. They are the very reason why you're existing in the market. And they spend a significant amount of time and effort on attaining good customer satisfaction. But you need to also look into whether this project strongly relates to your business goals or not. By reducing the delivery time of pizza from 30 minutes to 15 minutes, maybe it's going to increase your customer satisfaction. But in order to reduce from 30 minutes to 15 minutes, maybe you will have to hire 20% or 30% more delivery boys. Now that is going to eat away your revenue. It is going to eat away or it's going to increase your revenue, but it is going to eat away your profits. Is that your business goal? No. So look into your business goal as well and try to ensure that there's a win-win situation here. You increase customer satisfaction by ensuring that you also meet your business goals. And hence, define phase is extremely tricky. It's extremely tricky, right? You need to have a proper balance. You need to satisfy both the customer and ensure that you do not run out of business. You do not impact your profits or you do not eat away from your cost center. All right, how much effort should I spend on a Six Sigma Greenville project? It should not be more than six months, right? Three months to six months, maximum, including everything, including the handover of the process to the process owner. Yeah, when I say handover of the process, it is handover of the improved process. A good project must be manageable. If not, why do we even want to get into that project? Prolonged projects? No, a big no. They will ensure that the interest levels of the stakeholders are significantly reduced and it builds the frustrations among the team which is working with you right extremely dangerous don't do that the team also runs the risk of disintegrating and which projects should be kept at bay do not do what kind of projects it should not be bean sized projects you cannot say that I'm going to complete this project in a week and it qualifies to be a Six Sigma project. Don't do that. Probably you can implement lean concepts or Kaizen or Blitz Kaizen that should be able to address this. Yep. Because the improvements would be too small and the customer or your business is not going to appreciate you for that, for the efforts that you're investing. And remember Six Sigma, Involves a lot of statistics, a lot of data collection, a lot of data analysis, right? And do not try to solve the world hunger. Don't say that. I'm going to increase the revenue of all the departments of my organization. I'm going to arrest the attrition rate of all the departments of my organizations. That would not happen. You should not pick up such a big project. Be very cumbersome. All right. Yep. Do not pick up world hunger projects where the solution is beyond the control of the stakeholders with whom you're working. All right. What problem to select? Right. 
look at this diagram it clearly explains that if you know the cause and if you know the solution is going to be simple implement lean lean methodology if you know the cause and if you know that it's going to be complex still implement lean because you know what the problem is just go fix it if the cause is unknown and you know that solution might be simple then still implement lean only and only if you do not know the cause and if you know that the solution would be complex that is when you implement six sigma just because you're doing six sigma training does not mean you go pick up some project and try to force fit your learnings right it's not going to give you benefits it's a loose situation for you all right now that we know how to select a project now that we have selected the project let us get started with the step three which is all about preparing the project charter prepare project charter this project charter is the first document which gets prepared in any project it clarifies what is expected of the team it keeps the team focused on the common objectives it keeps the team aligned with your organizational priorities and it transfers the project from the champions to the project team most importantly it is a formal document to start a project or a phase so tomorrow if you want to start measure phase after completion of the defined phase still you need to have a project charter in place which is going to officially kick off the project say that yes there is a project which exists Yep, that is what this point speaks about. It's a formal agreement which ensures that the common project failures are prevented. Assume you are having a cup of coffee in your cafeteria. Suddenly your senior manager looks at you and feels that, oh, you do not have a lot of work. So he just walks up to you and says, you seem to be fairly available so can you do a six sigma project can you make do some improvements can you bring about some improvements you happily do that assuming that you would be rewarded assume that senior manager has left your organization now and it's your year and time it's your appraisal time which happens once in a year you go happily to the new boss and say that do you know what boss the previous boss has asked me to do a project, Six Sigma project. I've implemented that and I've brought significant improvements. I've impacted both the top line and the bottom line. If your new boss is good, excellent, he'll reward you. But if the new boss is someone like me, do you know what he would say? Get an email. Show me the proof on who asked you to do this project. The previous boss who left the organization. Was that a verbal communication? Yes. Then I'm not going to accept it. I do not even know whether this is authorized project to be performed or not. I do not even know whether it's going to meet your objectives or not. Right? So you'll get into such murky situations. Hence, have a project charter in place to be on the safe side and proceed with the project. Here are a few common project failures. Declining profits, rework. Someone walks up to you and says, do this, you have done that. But someone else comes and says that I do not like this. You'll have to end up doing rework. Without a formal document, if you do a project, these are the kind of problems that you're going to get into low motivation you'll get demotivated if your year-end appraisal goes for a toss you'll obviously be demotivated so don't do that by the way we will also provide you with a project charter template 
which is free to download from our LMS. You can do so. You can use it in your projects. It has all the key elements which should be part of a project charter. Right? So, a few more quick points about what project charter is. It focuses on documenting the initial requirements of the customer. Customer can be internal or customer can be external. It translates the stakeholder expectations into high level requirements. It most interestingly establishes the link between the customer and the project. Look at this. It establishes the link. All right. This is the appropriate process for naming a project manager. You name the project manager, you name the Six Sigma consultants here. Linking exists between customer and project if it is an internal project. However, if it is an external project, linking is between performing organization and the project. And this is by far the most important thing. Project charter development is an iterative process. It is a living document which will change over time. Most people assume that project charter is prepaid at the start of the project and you should not be making any changes to that. That is wrong. Right? Project charter is prepaid at the start of the project when requirements may not be extremely clear. So as and how you move along, you will get some clarity on the requirements and that might trigger a change. Trigger a change to your objective as well. Trigger a change to the amount that you're planning to save as part of implementing your Six Sigma project. It might trigger a change to your timelines as well. Right? So it's a living document updated as and how you get clarity. Let us look into the key components of Project Charter. By the way, the template that we are provided has all the important sections. Here's the first one, business case. Why should you do this project? And what are the benefits? Right? How does this project align with your business strategy? And most interestingly, it speaks about the amount that you plan to save. Hence, it creates urgency in the senior management. If there are true projects and if your Six Sigma initiative says that I'll help you save a million dollars, immediately you'll get the buy-in from all the senior management. Now, hence, it becomes extremely important. Let me take you off track and explain you about a simple concept called as elevator pitch. Elevator pitch. Suppose, you are caught in a lift with the CEO of a company and the CEO would stay with you for a brief time, right? Because he'll end up going to a different floor. You might end up going to a different floor or same floor. Nevertheless, you have very minimum time to ensure or to speak to the CEO in such a way that he calls you back. At some point or the other, what would you do? This is what you do. You simply say that you'll help him save a million dollars. You simply say it's that you'll help him save some dollars. The moment you say dollars, the moment you say money, cost, people's ears will suddenly, you know, open up. Right? So, and then you can expect your chances of getting a call are high. Yeah, it's extremely high that you might get a call. All right. The second thing is project scope. What are the boundaries of the initiative, start and end? I am going to help improve the processing time of the finance department. Now that is in scope for you. If this is your organization, you're clearly telling that I'll help improve the processing time of our finance team. They might be processing few applications, loan applications, or insurance policy applications, whatever be it. You'll try to reduce that. So you have drawn a boundary. And you will also say that 
all the other departments would be out of scope for me. So you define in scope and out of scope. That is extremely important because otherwise there would be, there would be a lot of scope creep. Today you might feel that I need not draw the project scope. I'll just get started. I'll say that I'm going to make improvements to the finance department. Tomorrow suddenly some other stakeholder might step in and say that, hey, the improvement project that you're doing seems like it's going to have an impact on my department as well. So can you do an improvement here as well? Day after, another senior leader might walk up to you and say that. Seems like you're doing improvement projects for finance and HR team. Why don't you include us in the scope? Instead, if you have a clear scope defined, you can say that our scope is defined. I will do another project at a later point of time, right? It also says what authority we have on the project and what is out of scope, which we have already discussed. Boundaries of the projects, basically, you define the boundaries. All right, what is a problem statement? What pain are we or our clients experiencing? What is wrong or not wrong, right? Why do we think we can generate the value proposition described in the business impact? Basically, you're coming and outlining the pain area of the customer or the pain area of your business or your or the pain area of cost of poor quality, right? It has to be clearly there. And once you have a problem, you need to have a goal. What is it that you're going to improve? What are your targets? All right? And your goal statement should be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. We will learn about this with an example. So just bear with me until then. It's coming up probably in the next slide. We'll understand how to define an excellent goal statement. How will success be measured? What specific parameters will be measured? Right? There's nothing but your CTQ. I'm going to reduce the delivery time. I'm going to improve the quality. I'm going to increase the productivity. I'm going to reduce the processing time. I'm going to increase the occupancy percentage of a multiplex. Yeah, these are all the CTQs. That is the goal statement, which has to be smart. Look into the abbreviation, right? In the next exercise, we'll also discuss about the abbreviation. All right, team selection. This is extremely imperative once again. Who are the team members that you have chosen? And the team should always be cross-functional. What do you mean by cross-functional? You need to have people who possess different skills, preferably people from various departments, different functions. Because you need to look into a problem holistically. You need to target it holistically. If you have multiple people from multiple functions, multiple skills coming together to solve the problem, a result will be profound. Yeah. What is their role? Yeah, you will have to define this. You can also select your suppliers and customers. And how much time will the, will the team going to dedicate? Right? To this particular Six Sigma project. Remember one thing, always you need to request for a full-time resource to work on a Six Sigma project. If that is not possible, and if a resource is more working on multiple projects, then this Six Sigma project should be of utmost importance to them. Yeah, you'll have to ensure you will need to possess those negotiation skills to do that. Project plan, basically timelines. How are we going to get this done? What are your milestones? When are we going to complete the work? What is your schedule? What are your major milestones or toll gates? Right? Basically, you can also come up with your critical path. Just explore what critical path is because it's out of scope for this. It's part of project management. Right? 
you can do PMP certification or you can do PRINCE2 projects in controlled environment to know more about the critical path. As I've promised, here is a goal statement which has to be smart in nature. It has to be specific. It has to be measurable. It has to be achievable. It has to be relevant to the organization that you're working in and that it also should be time bound. Right? Look at this goal statement and this is the good example. This is how your goal statement should be written. I want to reduce the percentage of software defects. What do you want to do? I want to reduce the percentage of software defects. Okay, from 40% to 10%. Ah, now you have given me the magnitude. That sounds great. But by when? In the next two months. Where do you want to do this? I want to do this in Hyderabad region. So where is available? All right, but what are you going to do? What is in it for me? I'll help you save a thousand thousand, right? Or I'll help you save a million dollars per year. This is the magnitude. With this particular goal statement as reference, can you tell me what is missing in the goal statements which is provided here? First one. Do we have the what? Reduce the cost of rework. Okay, I want to reduce the cost of rework. Fine. But what is the magnitude? You want to reduce the cost of rework by what percentage? So magnitude is missing here. Right? But by when do you want to do this? I want to do it in the next four months. Fine. When is there? Right? But here, where is also there? You want to do it in a specific company. That's fine. But by implementing this, by doing this, what is it that you're going to save? Right? Dollars, brand image, tangible or intangible benefits. What is it that you're going to save? That is not available. So it's incomplete from both magnitudes perspective. Look into this example. Improve order to ship time by 50%. What is missing in this? What do you want to do? You want to improve order to ship. All right, what is available? Magnitude is available. You want to reduce it by 50%, but you're not committing on the time here. So by when you want to complete this, it's not given. And what is the magnitude of savings that you want to bring about? This is also missing. Let me erase this. Okay, look at the third example. Reduce revenue loss due to unauthorized discounts by 80%. What do you want to do? I want to reduce revenue loss due to unauthorized discounts. Fine. You have this what part? Amazing. By 80%, you are also mentioning about the magnitude. But by when do you want to do this? You haven't mentioned that. Again, timelines are missing. And what is the impact that you're going to bring about is missing. Right? So you need to focus on all that. I'm not mentioning about where because I'm assuming that these statements are related to those specific companies. All right. Decrease time spent in admin activities by 25%. Uh-huh. Good, sounds good, sounds interesting. Let us look into whether it qualifies to be stated as a good goal statement or not. Decrease time spent in admin activities. Yep, what do you want to do is there. Is it measurable? Yes, I want to reduce it by 25%. So it is measurable. So you are specific, you are measurable. Is this achievable? 25% sounds like okay. Relevant, we don't know the business context. If the context is given, probably that is yes. Is it time bound? No, that's missing here. So we don't know when, we don't know what is the magnitude of impact it's going to have once again. The timelines and the magnitude is missing. 
Next thing, reduce errors in customer application form to zero. Ah, what do you want to do? You want to reduce the errors in customer application forms. Okay, kind of specific. But if I can say, what errors am I going to reduce in the customer application? Incorrect name of the customer, incorrect telephone numbers, incorrect PIN code numbers, missing email IDs, missing phone numbers. Am I going to target those specific values or entire customer application? Maybe, right? Maybe it is specific. I want to reduce errors in customer application form to zero. Is it achievable? I don't think so. Six Sigma says three point defects per million opportunities. Here you're speaking about zero. Can you achieve that? Oh, I don't think so. Is it measurable? Yeah, you have a measure, but seems impossible task or rather extremely difficult. Is it relevant? We don't know. Maybe yes, based on the business context. Is it time bound? No, I do not have the time. And also I do not have the magnitude. What is the impact that I'm going to have on the project? I do not have that. Last example is increase productivity by 30%. What do I want to do? I want to increase my productivity. Fine, by what? By 30%, yeah. Seems like it is not specific because I'm not speaking about which department or whose productivity am I going to increase here? I don't know, it's not specific. Is it measurable by 30%? Yes, seems like. Is it achievable? Oh, maybe. Is it relevant? Maybe in the business context. Is it time bound? No, I do not have this information. So when information of the timeline is once again missing here, right? And the magnitude. What is the impact that you're going to bring in is missing. All right, so all the statements have something or the other missing. And I assume now you're clear with the understanding of what SMART means. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. And this is a classic example of a good goal statement. Huh. All right. Is my project charter complete? Can you please help me? understand whether my project charter is complete or not? Uh-huh, yes, we will try to get answers to these questions. Have we answered all the questions for each element of the project charter? In the previous slides, we have discussed about six components or sections of project charter. Is it complete? Does the black belt or green belt clearly understand what is to be improved? by when you will have to bring about those improvements and who are the resources assigned to you and how is your success measured? If you feel yes, you understand, then let us look into the next thing. Does the sponsor clearly understand whether the project is doable? Can you do, sorry, my bad. Can you do it? Is it even worth doing it? You do a cost benefit analysis. I need to invest a million dollars on all these Six Sigma folks and the team and the tools and software, but the result is going to be only $500,000. Is it worth? No. I'm spending $100,000 on this project on all the resources, human resources and the non-human resources, such as software and all that. And it's going to bring about an improvement of a million dollars. Then yes, it is worth doing maybe. So sponsor has to understand that clearly. A high enough priority to dedicate resources because you need to dedicate full-time resources. If not, resources should be given instructions that this project, Six Sigma project, should be given highest importance. Yeah. How to measure progress and how do you want to conclude the project? How do you want to basically measure the success and say that, yes, this is a successful project completion. Right, you need to look into all that. Now that you have a project charter, you can go ahead and prepare your high level process map. Right, and SIPOC is the best known Six Sigma tool which is going to help you do that. Few people use it as COPIS, the reverse of this, C-O-P-I-S, that's fine. 
as long as you have an objective of coming up with a high level process map that is absolutely fine s stands for supplier i stands for input p for process o for output and c for customer let us understand this First, you need to define what the outputs are. These are the tangible things that the process produces. For example, a report, a letter, a mobile phone, or what is my process going to produce? Then you need to define who are your customers who are going to use the outputs. And these are the people who receive your outputs. Every output should have a customer. Remember this. I repeat, every output should have a customer. But let us look into what the inputs are. These are the things that are going to trigger your process. They will often be intangible. Example, a customer request. All right. And who is going to supply you these inputs? Right. These are the people who supply the inputs. Every input should have a supplier. I repeat, every input should have a supplier. In some end-to-end -end processes, the supplier and the customer may be the same person. Take example of your photocopy machine. You give an input as a piece of paper and you get the output. So you, you provide the input and also you consume the output and also define the sub processes that make up the process right these are the activities that are carried out to convert the inputs into output yeah you need to define the sub processes let us understand this with an example here you have suppliers who provide you with the input there is a process which happens and the process is going to generate some outputs which is consumed by consumers customers they are going to give you back some feedback yeah so that you might tweak your process if required huh. like let us look into this interesting example this is what happens most often than not especially with the married couple right if you're married for probably first six months or so your wife is going to make tea for you post which you end up making tea for your wife for the rest of your life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, let us look into this. This this process is all about making tea. Supplier is a husband and also supermarket because you need to get some inputs from supermarket. You get tea bag, you get kettle, you get electricity, water, milk, and cup right what that husband do is going to bring all this and what is the process you add water to the kettle right you add tea back to the cup then you make tea and the output is cup of tea right and you use a tea bag and you serve it to your wife if she's unhappy then you'll be kicked out of home right and if she's happy, you end up spending most of your time in kitchen. Either way, you're at risk, my dear friend. <laughs> All right, jokes apart, let us move on. You can also come up with a high level map, which is shown in this way, right? You can come up with a flowchart or you can come up with a functional deployment map, which is also called as swim lane right functional deployment map or swim lane swim lane because this looks like swimming lanes right suppose there's a swimming pool i need to swim in this lane another person will swim in this lane majorly you see that in competitions olympics etc right functional deployment map look at the salesperson is supposed to do this process this process and this third process Though this entire thing is a process flow, he's not going to touch the other components. Now the sales manager is going to do this second process, third one, and he's going to take a decision. 
this called as decision box and third function that's payroll clerk is going to look into only this process step and the finance manager is going to look into this final step right by the way you connect arrows you, you connect your process steps using arrows this is the start box this is the decision box this is the process box right and there's the stop box by the way all right you have a start point you need to have an end point you will have decision points you will have sequence of steps and which departments of functions are getting involved it's obvious by looking into this functional deployment map isn't it right ha huh. a sigh of relief for you and me we come to an end this is the key output project charter which is most often than not approved by your stakeholder sponsor sponsor is the person who is going to give you money and resources to perform this project so approved project charter is a key output you also came up with a high level process map called a sipoc supplier input process output and customer then you come up with overview flow chart now the team is ready to move to the measure phase great job give a pat on your back <laughs> all right a quick summary what did we do in the define phase we came up with multiple project ideas we generated using voice of customer voice of business and cost of poor quality from that we have identified primary ctq and secondary ctq primary ctq is something that we tend to improve upon and secondary ctq is something which we want to keep constant or try to you know improve upon this parameter as well once we zero on a particular ctq we come up with a project charter we need to prepare this along with the background of the project what is the goal of the project what is the business case who will be working on my project what is the project scope and what are the high level timelines in terms of project plan we have looked into how to come up with goals which are specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound business case should be very clearly documented you need to come up with a project scope which has in scope and out of scope elements or you can either also come up with sipoc yeah that's the high level process map you can also come up with that here to define your scope project plan would contain your milestones and timelines for the project and most interestingly and important thing is project charter is a living document and can be revised at any point of time and once the project charter is approved you prepare your high level process map using sipoc right it may also help you in the scoping of the project which is also mentioned here all right guys in the next session we are going to discuss about measure phase and it's going to be calculation heavy we are going to use mini tab to a very great extent in the measure phase and then analyze phase in which usage of mini tab would be extremely high not to worry the magic box mini tab is going to do the things for us we just need to focus on the concepts all right thank you for listening to me patiently hope this has helped you a lot thank you so much bye